Brandon, thank you for coming on. Dude, season two of Fargo Talk. Season two. Number one guest. I appreciate that, man. It's the first time I've been number one in a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were just talking before we started, and you are someone that is like the everyman uh, in terms of your content. Yeah. And it's a it's a global reach. And I mean, I have several friends that don't live here that follow you because before they come to Vegas, they're checking out your content. Damn. Yeah. I, I didn't know what a baddie was until you, <laughs> I'm a 54 year old man, like, you know, in, a, in, in, in love with a woman. I'm like, F -f fuck's a baddie. Yeah. Like, I had no idea what that was. Yeah. What, like one of your uh, clips I want you to talk about a little bit is like for guys coming to Vegas who are single. Yeah. Oh, that's the best video I ever made. That was the video that let me knew that I was going to be a content creator, honestly, because that was just like a, I'm stuck at the MGM. Uh, my content shoots going terribly. I need something. And so I walked through the MGM and I, you know, I noticed that there was a bunch of, you know, older women lining up the slot machines, which is typical for Vegas, if you know anything about Vegas. And so I just whipped my camera out and I told the audience, hey, listen, if you're looking for the young hot girls, they walk through the center of the aisle because they want everybody to see them. They are in their sheen outfit, their little cocktail dresses. But if you're hunting the cougars, <laughs> they're sitting at the slot machines getting those free drinks in because they know what they're doing. And I just did it to be funny, you know, a little Vegas content. And that video went crazy. And that's when I realized, oh, people are interested in the dirty, grimy Vegas. They don't want starched blue man group. They want to know where the action is. And it completely changed my mindset. And that went from, and correct me if I'm wrong, but that went from now like places off the strip to go eat. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Like here's a, like places you've been gatekeeping for a long time. Yes. Right. And places to go for drinks, places now that people do. Cause I, I've had stuff go viral that people just hate on Vegas. Like what <laughs> one of them that's gone viral now is uh, we're talking about how Summerlin is one of the best places in the world to live that Mark Wahlberg moved here. The visceral fucking hatred that people have about Vegas, and there's two camps of Vegas haters. Yeah. The ones that have been here, only been to the Strip in July, and it sucks there, it's too hot, the schools are terrible, blah, blah, blah. Then there's the ones of people who live here and hate on Vegas. Yeah. That's a whole nother level of retardation, because <laughs> why the fuck are you living here? And you hate it so much. 100%. Get the fuck out. 100%. Move. You can go north and have better weather. You can go <laughs> You can go east and have better people. Shit, go back to California. You can get the beach bag, right? You got plenty of options. I, I have a suggestion for you. If, if you hate Vegas and you live here, uhaul.com, great website. You can get a pod. You can get a goddamn truck. And get the fuck out. Get out. Just get out. Get out. Go find some. That's what I tell people. Go find somewhere better. Go find somewhere better than Vegas where you have unlimited entertainment. You have great communities, great people outside of the, obviously the summer where it's hot. The weather here is pretty manageable. We don't have snowstorms. We don't have blizzards. We don't have hurricanes. We don't have earthquakes. Go find somewhere better. Oh yeah. And make sure you can buy a house there while you're at it. It is something to me that, it, 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 that, that boggles my mind. Pisses me off. As a, and you're a realtor. So absolutely that you, you could, you have a vested interest in that. Um, do you get a lot of people from California? Uh, right now I'd say 80% of our buyers are from California simply because a lot of them have realized that California has given up on them. So they've given up. They're refugees. Honestly, they're refugees. That's the honest. That's the best way to put it. They don't feel like they're leaving because they want to. They feel like they're leaving because they have to, like they're being forced out. And it, I, I don't want to use the word violently because obviously there's no like force, but through economics, they feel like they're being forced out of a place they want to be. Is Gavin Newsom the best referral partner you've ever had? <laughs> That's a perfect way of looking at it. Gavin Newsom has done more for Vegas real estate than any human being on planet Earth. Seriously. Every time that guy comes up with a new policy, I get 20 new buyers. It's fantastic. I, I think that with NAR and everything going on, which is boring as shit, I really don't want to get into it because most people are like, what the fuck? However, I think that somehow, some way, Las Vegas Realtors, LVR, should have a little kitty and set up a, a fund. 1% of every commission that comes in from Realtors goes to reelect Gavin Newsom in perpetuity as emperor of California, California for life. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. People who have watched this first, that's fucking funny. People who are watching this are going to get a little salty, 
but you keep voting for him, right? And the person before him, you voted for that person. And the person after him, like, I, okay, not to take this to a place that maybe they didn't want to go, but like, it boggles my mind that people just jump from Joe Biden to Kamala Harris. They just jump from one person to the other person. And it's just like, I don't think they actually like any of these people, right? Because Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, completely different person. Gavin Newsom and whoever they're going to elect next, completely different people. It's just like, this person's in my camp, so I must vote for him. And it's like, but you hate your life and you hate your state and you hate everything around you. Yes, but I must, I must vote the way I'm told, you know? And yeah, reelect Gavin Newsom for life. Make him the lifetime governor of California. I will make money until the day I die. Make him the Maximus Aurelius, the great, you know, from, from Gladiator <laughs> yes. of California. 100%. And because if you're a realtor here, and it, it's realtor, by the way, not realtor, which I think Brandon gets a little chubby whenever I say realtor because I'm giving him respect. <laughs> <laughs> it is something that gives you job security. Yeah. For you to have that amount of people, you know, 80%, like, it's insane. Wow. It's insane. Well, think about that. You can sell a two-bedroom condo in San Diego, 800000 850000 come out here and buy a pool, backyard, turf, five bedrooms, you know, family palace for you and your family, right? Like, it's a completely different lifestyle change for these people. So I can't knock them for wanting a better life. I can't knock them for wanting to live in the best city on the world. Right? People in Vegas get really mad when I say this, but we're the best city in the world. Why would people not want to come here? We go on social media and what do we do? Vegas is the best. Look how many awesome things you can do. There's places to eat. You can party. Oh, what's there? And then like we're shocked. Like, why do people want to keep moving here? Well, fuck it. We let the secret out the bag. We let the cat out the bag, you know? Let, let's talk about that a little bit because you're very good at, I don't want the opposite of gatekeeping. I know, by the way, you also talked about gatekeeping was like yeah. baddies, gatekeeping. There's a whole thing I had to freaking Google to like look up whatever Brandon says. I'm something. the connector between people 40 plus and people 25 yes. and under. 50, I'm, the, I'm 54. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, I love this man so much. It's like you and my 15 year old daughter. She'll text me some like three letters. I'm like, what the shit is this, honey? So I have to go in Urban Dictionary and Facts. find out what the hell it is. Don't worry. My, my niece just taught me what aura means. I said, I said, I said, Kylie, what, why do I keep saying aura on my for you page? She goes, aura, you know, like someone's swag. I said, oh, it's the new swag. You got aura. Okay. Put me on. See, I'm, I'm still on drip. So I don't, <laughs> I, I, that's how far back I am. Thank you. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I miss drip. I, I, I that whole section of, of a vernacular, I completely I'm missed on that one. I'm, I'm a fossil when it comes to that shit. No, you feel hipper than everybody I meet. I'm being real with you. Well, I've met you multiple times. Don't let this man fool you. This man's cool as shit. He tries to pretend like he's not. I'm someone that is Gen X, so I just don't give a shit. Yeah. Right? And you either love me or you don't. If you don't, that's okay. I'm okay with that because only I give someone permission to offend me. Yeah. And Say so that again. I like that. Only I can give someone permission to offend me to my face through a mean comment on one of my posts, yeah. only I can let them get into that spot yeah. that really gets me. Yeah. And it's rare. It's rare. Because I love who I am and what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm coming from a place of happiness and growth and karma. I want to see my friends succeed yeah. and, and do well with zero amount of reciprocity. Can I ask you something? What's? I'll tell you mine first if, if it makes it easier for you. What's the meanest thing people say about you on social media? Ooh, that's a good one. I'll start if it makes you feel better. Go ahead. Okay, so people make fun of my weight as if I don't know that I eat food a lot, right? <laughs> like I have a page full of like Wagyu burgers and stuffed turkey Alfredo. And they're like, hey, fat boy. And I'm like, hi, <laughs> you're on my page watching me eat food, right? That They think it's going to scar me. And I'm like, bro, I get paid to eat this food, right? I know who I am. It's Mine's bald, being bald. You look great. Ba ba thank you. And that's what I'm, I always reply back with a bald emoji. Like, <laughs> or I do the one, I do the gif of Austin Powers and there's eggs and there's his bald head coming up <laughs> with the eggs. And that, that's my reply back. Cause I'm cool being bald. Yeah. It's okay. I, I'm, I'm, I'm genetically uh, gifted in other, in other areas. Yeah, my man. Let's just say that where I'm, I'm happy with who I am. So again, I don't let somebody offend me if they say my age is, is, is probably a close second yeah. also, but I, I've been doing social media since 94 with America online with AOL. So hey. I just, you dude. in them chat rooms, huh? Dude. Oh, <laughs> oh, I, I, listen, before there was catfishing, 
guaranteed. I thought I was I was you know getting off with some leggy blonde yeah. from the U, USC volleyball team, and it's some obese Latin man from Spanish Harlem with skin tags. One hundred percent guaranteed. What was it? ASL ASL a- age sex location. Yes, remember those days. A slash S <laughs> slash L. Yes, hey, America Online is where I learned all my pickup nightclub game age sex location, baby. <laughs> And meanwhile, you and the send me a picture of you. It's a scanned yeah. picture, yeah. you know. But so that was for getting back to your original question. It's it's the bald thing or age, but it's something that again people always like look at you, me to say like we have a decent audience online. Yeah. Oh, it's all great and you love it and you're no, actually it's a lot of work. Uh, you're putting out content literally every day. Yes. You're obsessed with content creation. Yes. And you're only as good as your last clip that went up. Yes. 100%. Right? 100%. People, people, there's people who haven't seen my last 40 videos. They've only seen the viral videos that I pumped out a year ago, two years ago. They'll never see the new stuff. If you're not constantly pumping out new, and this is something that people don't know about social media, it's it's an infinite commercial. So whatever your most viral videos are, that's what they show people. So there's people who are like, hey, I just saw you went to China, mama. I haven't been to China, mama, in a year. Right? They haven't. They literally haven't watched any of my new stuff. You're only as good as what you pumped out yesterday. And it's, it's mind busting. It literally... You see these gray hairs? I have, I'm more gray since the last time I was in here. This is social media. Real estate's easy. This is social media. People don't give a shit. Can I say shit? I'm yeah. not saying shit. People don't give a shit about what you did two weeks ago. They need new content today. And if not, there's a hundred other foodies willing to show it to them right now. And it's, it's, it's tough. Your space is very competitive. Yeah. Very competitive. But again, you've carved out a niche for yourself. Mm-hmm that you are the every man because you're just, you're approachable. And yeah. you, you know that. You're not a five foot 10 leggy blonde with a thigh gap no. who does bottle service at Encore Beach Club. <laughs> no. You're the bizarro world of that. Yes. But you're approachable like a guy like me was drawn to your content immediately when you're like talking about, and we'll go into it, like your favorite place for dinner off the strip. Herbs are right. Yes. Why? It's Vegas. It's Vegas. It's when I think of Vegas, I think of herbs and rye. Dark, cavernous. You could take a date there. You could take a, you know, a working lady there. You can show they're drugged up, coked up, drunk, a little tipsy, or you can show up at five o'clock in a tux with your wife and take wedding photos. You'll in the same restaurant, you'll have the coked out nightclub promoter in the back and a, a wedding party taking beautiful romantic photos in the front. That's Vegas. And Herbs and Rye really captures that, you know? And I went there because of you, and it was phenomenal. It's dark. They, they make a nice old-fashioned. Yeah. They make a really nice old-fashioned. The price doesn't gouge you. Yep. And forever, I was Hank's because I live in Henderson. So I was going to Hank right back when I was single. Hank's happy hour is the best happy hour in town. In, in Vegas. In, in my opinion, it is the best in town. Yep. They make the best dirty martini yep. in town is at Hank's. Yep, nine at bucks. Green, at Green Valley Ranch. And like the... <laughs> Their food offerings that they have for, you know, for, um, for the hors d'oeuvres, mm-hmm. half off. What? Yeah. And you, you have to literally, you have to be a third degree jujitsu belt to fend off the 85 year old Kino <laughs> players that have reserved like half the bar yes. is reserved. <laughs> and you know, yes. like it's, 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 it's like a fucking Sharpay convention yes. of California raisins. It's, it's people that died two weeks ago and nobody <laughs> told them. Nobody. Facts, but they are there at 4 p.m. religiously, and if you sit in their seat, they are calling security to yeah. remove your ass. Dude, they're, they're, you'll get pepper sprayed yes. by a 90 year old if you sit in their no, seat. No, you know who's gonna pepper spray you is that is that waitress and bartender who knows that's where her tip money's yeah. coming off. She's gonna flirt yeah. with that old man for yeah. an hour and a half. He's going he just won ten thousand dollars playing Keno or blackjack, and he can't wait to throw it to this hot young yeah. waitress. You know, yeah. and. It's a beautiful thing. That's Vegas too. It's it's wonderful. Um, what are some places that you gate kept for a while and then said finally, all right, I'm going to let people know about these places? Uh, in fact, I'm man, you're fucking good at this. There's literally a video I'm going to drop today on a place called Chubby Cattle. Chubby Cattle. I'm actually a Chubby Cattle. Look at me. They do all you can eat wagyu. 
Korean barbecue. It's technically Japanese barbecue, but they have a little Korean flair. Bro, I've been gatekeeping this place for like two months. Because I say, once people find out about it, I'm not going to be able to walk in here randomly anymore. Brother, they have the meat up front with the certificates. So you can see the fatty marbled Wagyu as you walk in. And they have the certificate that says, oh, this is where we got it in Japan. And it is as good as it sounds. It's like 85 bucks for the top premium menu. But brother, they will sit there and serve you slice after slice of Wagyu until you're fatty, disgusting mess like me. Meat sweats. Meat, like sweats. meat sweats. Yeah. Like, like Brazilian oh, steakhouse yeah. meat sweats. Oh, w brother, worse, because it's it's all just straight fatty Wagyu, oh. and you're just like, you can feel it bleeding from your pores, and you're like, let me get 10 more racks of that immediately. I want to really hurt today. I, I want to like do that and like watch Shogun at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a good show? Great show. Yeah? I, I Dating myself, I, the original one with Richard Chamberlain was really good, but the, the one that the remake... Unbelievable. Really? Oh, yeah. I've been thinking about diving. I've been diving into a new show since like Game of Thrones, and I'm thinking about diving into something. It looks like it's up my alley. It's, uh, absolutely. It's, I'm big. Uh, Japan is on my bucket list okay. to go to just because of the tech combined with 5,000 year history. History. Right? Yeah. So I, th that's, I want to go there someday. And so anything that is accurate. That's cool. That shows like the landscape yeah. and Mount Fuji and the women with their fucking feet getting bound, bound. that, you know, like the same size as my, my eight year old son <laughs> and they're a 40 year old woman with her toes curled yeah. up and, you know, but the, the amount of respect that that culture has to this yeah. day yeah. that we do not have here. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm an old school guy from upstate New York, okay. you know, raised by a Roman Catholic Italians. Okay. So I'm all about respect. Like yeah. I, when, when I saw you, I gave you a hug. I'm a hugger. Yeah. You know? And but Good I'm all about, too. thank you. And that's dude, and that's a that's something that as respect to a friend, you know, you want to just say, hey man, I I love you, I appreciate you. Give me a hug. Yeah, let's touch some skin. Yeah, and and so I'm I'm big with that in a city that really I think gets a bad rap because, and we've talked about this, mm -hmm. people hate on Vegas because it's transparent, because it's transient, mm -hmm. because it's you see everything going on, but all they see is the strip. Yeah. But also, I've never made, present company included, better friends here. Yes. Yes. Right? People have to understand the day-to-day -day life of people who live in Vegas. Okay? If you work on the Strip, your day-to-day -day life is doing nice things for people you're never going to see again. Doing favors for people you're never— If you're a bottle girl in Vegas, every day there's a different dude from a different country trying to take you home. Because to to them, you're just some one night, two night fling. They leave. You have to stay here. So when you come to Vegas, we're a little defensive because we're used to people coming here, taking from us, wanting things from us, and then leaving us. But if you stay in Vegas long enough, if you stay here long enough, five, six years, and you prove to us that like, no, I'm here. I'm here with you. I'm willing to jump into this act with you, we'll open up to you in ways you never even understood. But for those of you who just got here or just visiting, yeah, we're a little cold because you guys come here and we're Disneyland. We're characters in your movie. And that's how you treat us as like some side character who you're going to, you're going to bang in a hotel room, right? Boy or girl, doesn't matter. I used to work security in nightclubs. You know how many girls from England wanted to come to Vegas and fuck their first black dude, right? And it was just like cool at first, but then it's like, Okay, great. I'm just another fetish for you, right? You, you don't even know my name. It's just, I'm a thing. I'm a character. And like, yeah, we're defensive. But you got to get past that. And when you do, I'm telling you, the people of Vegas, you'll make the closest relationships you've ever had. It, I equate coming, visiting Vegas like a wedding reception. Okay, okay put me on. You, you, you go with the intent, especially if you're single, you're going to get shit-faced. You're going to do blow. You're going to do, <laughs> I've never done Molly before, but you're going to do ecstasy or whatever. Yeah. And you're going to party your ass off and you're looking to hook up. Okay. With a man, a woman, a, a goat, whatever. Whatever. We, we've got it all. Yeah. We've got it all. Yeah. And, but you're looking for no holds barred and with people you're never going to see again. Mm-hmm. Just like a wedding reception. Okay, I there's see that. There's people that, you know, if you're a guy, and I did it back when I was single, and there's cousin April 
over and she's in the wedding party yeah. and she's hot and there's no ring on her finger and she's not with a guy and mm. you lock eyes and it's open bar and you yeah. happen to go up and you're both having a drink and next thing you know you're doing shots uh, and you know and oh we got a, b- a bunch of rooms here at the Marriott yeah. and next thing you know up you go Yeah, I think Vegas is the same way on a more diverse scale that you've got like I, again I, I don't go to clubs it'd be creepy for me to go to a fucking club <laughs> just please at my age it'd, it'd be like you know just sugar creepy. daddies, sugar daddies are a big thing in clubs right now. I, it, to me, it is. And when I was single, I went through a phase of like I dated some twenty and thirty year old girls okay. that were great. They were awesome. I'm actually still friends with them. Awesome girls, but it was long term. It's like after the physical thing, they're doing this, and you're just like you, you want to cuddle and talk, yeah, and have a conversation. Hundred percent. And they're they're on TikTok. Hundred percent. Right? Instantly too. Matter of fact, while Instantly. you're doing while you're doing it, like, <laughs> well, and that was. And sometimes I'm like, go ahead, you know. They're live streaming this. <laughs> I've got I've got either girls were either live streaming it or women my age were watching Doctor Phil at the same time. You yeah. know, it's, it's fine. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> You know, as, as long as I, as long as I, I, I always tell people I'm an only child. So I was a narcissist. I yell my own name during sex. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I've never got that one before. Oh, Brandon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, or it's, or talk about myself in the third person. Me, me, me. 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 Oh, me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's some Vegas shit right there. <laughs> And, I, I, and again, some people are cut out for Vegas. Yeah. Some are not. I think the over under here is about three years. What you know, the people for the, for people to stay. Yeah. If you make it past that three years, things change for you, right? Because Vegas is a twenty four hour city. If you're a workaholic or someone who just look is looking to like, if you're a broke twenty something guy, right, and you're looking to just get on your feet, I think Vegas is a great city because. You can literally work 24 seven here. You can be a bar back during the day. You can go work the night shift at a nightclub. You, if you want to sell drugs in the nightclub, guess what? We got 800 clubs for you to do that. Like whatever profession, legal yeah. or illegal, you want to engage in, we got it here. You want to scam people? I got a million tourists a day you can go and scam, right? You want to you wanna grind and work your way up the ladder? Join one of the unions, you know, uh, on the strip and work your way to the top of the mountain, right? Like we're a 24 hour working city. And if you can make it past that three years, I think you're golden. It's just, you got to make it past that first three. The first three is a grind. Yeah. The first three is a grind. Yeah. We're I super agree. defensive. If uh, I want to get back to the whole, because a lot of my audience is guys. Okay. Right. Like I'd say 85% okay. are guys. And if I'm a single guy and I'm looking to go to Vegas and it's my first time, what club do I have to go to and Why? I'll ask one of two questions. We can go anyway. Either how much money do you have or what kind of girls do you like? I'll tell you both. Okay. Um, I'm going to come here for a weekend. Okay. And I've got about uh, five grand on my credit card. Okay. Okay. Because no one brings cash. No one brings cash. It's just how much you have on your credit card. Of course. And um, any girl that will talk to me. Oh, (laughs) well, you need to go to Encore Beach Club. Encore Beach Club to me is the, not just the best pool club in Vegas. To me, it's the best club in Vegas if you're just looking for a good time. It's got everything you want. Everybody there is sexy. Uh, all the girls there are day drunk, crazy drunk, right? You'll have a mix. I used to work that club, so I know. You'll have porn stars there. You'll have exotic dancers there. You'll have local girls there. You'll have tourist girls there, right? And all of them are there looking to have a good time. Even if you don't go home with someone, it's definitely worth a look, right? It's just beautiful all around you. The music kind of, it's a little EDM-y, but if you're just going to hit one club, Encore Beach Club is that club. And how much am I going to spend? If one of the big popular DJs is there, you might have a cover charge, you know, 50, 75 bucks. If it's like one of those huge DJs, they might rack it up to a hundred, depending on how busy it is. You're looking at any, you know, $12 Red Bulls, $22 drinks, but that's Vegas nightclubs, right? I would advise you going to the, the the CVS on the strip, buying some liquor, chugging it before you go in and and save yourself the money. Or just do what everybody else does. Pop a gummy or two, drink some cannoline. It'll last you three to four hours in the club. You're fine. Let's talk gummies for a little bit. Um, one of our, our combined favorite topics oh, yeah. ever. Where is your favorite place to go if you're gonna if you're gonna in, imbibe in cannabis? Okay. Um, where is your favorite place to go? Uh, to to purchase and why? 
there is a store. Now, this is some local shit. So if you're listening to this, you you gotta you gotta drive into actual Vegas. You can't do this shit on the strip. There's a store called the Dispensary Express on Eastern. Eastern and like Windmill, that area. Pecos, no, Pecos and Windmill. They do daily deals. And if you catch them on gummy day, brother, you can get two packs of gummies, $20. You can get the best gummies on earth, on earth. You ever had flight bites? No. My brother, my brother in Christ, today, not tomorrow, today, they're they're rosin-based gummies, so they're not all that distillate crap. It's the authentic, high-quality shit. They're called flight bites. These, If you take one flight bite and go to the club, you don't need to buy a drink. One flight bite, when it hits you after that like 15 to 30-minute mark, you are golden. It's that perfect like body high where you feel invincible, but you're also not stupid in the head, you know, but you just feel good about yourself. Flight bites. They have a, a, a mango tahini. Change your whole life. Promise you. Promise you. Anybody listen to this, when you come to Vegas, whatever dispensary you go to, ask the motherfuckers for flight bites. Best gummy on the market, period. Are you a flower guy? Are you just a gummy guy exclusively? I can't do flower anymore, man. My asthma's gotten... This is going to oh. sound super nerdy, and I know none of y'all care about this shit, but my asthma's gotten bad from all the flower. So I, I've exu I'm strictly either cannoline where I drink it, or yeah. it's gummies where I eat it. I'm, 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 I'm strictly that. Maybe hit a pen every now and then. I'm, I'm somebody that... I mean, back in the day, I used to buy weed from a guy named Tom Herb. I'm not making this up. <laughs> Canandaigua Academy, 19, class of 1987. I'd buy joints from Tom Herb, okay. and I would put a dollar in my English book and slide the book over to Tom and he'd open it up, pull the dollar out, put a joint in, close it and, and send it back to me. Y'all was doing the transaction in class? Mrs. Van Fleet, God rest her soul, English class, Canada Academy, Canada would, New York. Y'all wouldn't even wait till you got like, did it under the stairs or behind no, the school? No. You needed that shit ASAP. She didn't know what was going on. She was, I mean, she, she was an older woman, bless her heart, trying to teach us vowels and, you know, like an 11th grade. <laughs> you, you know, what a you hard had, A, what a hard A sounds what like. What a hard A sounds and like. And I was sliding over my, my you know, my cardboard paper wrapped book of English <laughs> with a dollar in it for Tom Herb, which was ERB, which is hysterical. <laughs> oh wait, so it wasn't the age? No, but, but but just the fact that his name was Tom, Tom Herb, Herb yeah. and he would he would sell me joints. I tell this story all the time to people. Like you're kidding? Like, no, I'm. I'm, I'm and it was I'm, it was the best shit you remember having. I'm, yeah, I'm a trailblazer. Okay, in, in that in in that in that methodology, I'm a fucking trailblazer with that shit. So. Yeah. Yeah. So joints were the same price as gas back then. <laughs> Basically. Uh, it was, but it was something that back then it's like skunk, seeds were in it. Yeah. Now it's, it's like, I, I go to the source over on Eastern is, okay. is my place. And okay. it's like going into an Apple store. Yeah. Like you have a bud tender and you give them your ID and then they've got you in a little iPad when you walk in and everything is behind plexiglass. Yeah. And I went in the other day and got some gummies and my girl had a laser pen to shoot down to like point stuff out to not smudge the, the plexiglass. Glass. I'm like, what the what? I'm not buying an iPad here, bro. We're buying drugs. And the drugs are amazing. Do you get into like the terpenes and all that, the, the nerdy side of it? I've I've done um, is that the sips? The sips are the, the shots, the, the the drinkable shots. I've I've done those. Is it what what's a terpene? So the terpene, if you matter of fact, if you want to blow your, your bud tender's mind and you want to see them light up, you want to see a bud tender get excited. Go to the source and say, hey, what are your favorite terpenes right now for gummies? Watch them be like, oh, you know your stuff. Okay, let me walk you over here. Terpenes are actually what give you the effects in cannabis. So everything in cannabis is a hybrid now because everything's been crossed with everything. It's just like a big sex orgy of marijuana. Everything's been crossed with everything now, right? Um, cookies has been crossed with this, and now it's been crossed with this. So the actual strain is no longer there. So the only way to identify what the effects are going to be is to ask about the terpenes, right? If it's high in limonene, it's going to make you more giggly, happy, that kind of effect. So if you know your terpenes, you can quite literally walk into a dispensary and they can tell you how the, the strain is going to make you feel. So if you're saying, if you tell them, I just want to go to sleep, I, that's it. I don't give a shit about nothing else. I just want sleep. They can recommend you something for sleep. Cannabis is getting so close to being 100% medicinal where they can isolate these terpenes. Now I'm getting into nerdy talks. Yeah, I fucked up. You're good. Cannabis is getting so close to being 100% medicinal where they can isolate specific effects. So instead of going in there and asking for a strain, you can go into the dispensary and say, I want to be happy today. I want to eat more today. I want to eat less today. 
You can, you're, we're, we're so close to that point and it's exciting. To me, I'm, I'm a big one with like this, my ADHD, I've got to equate it to something. Mm -hmm. And it's like going to a five-star restaurant and having a sommelier come over with the wine list. That's where cannabis is gone. Yes. That it's so specific now. And a bud tender isn't some tweaker who's just, who's all Chinese eyes, high as, a, high as giraffe nuts. And, you know, sitting there just saying, oh, get this, get this, this is on sale, whatever. Yeah. These people know their stuff. Yes. They're, they're trained and yeah, they've experienced and they get like, when I retire, I want to work at a dispensary. Yeah. That's my, like, j just for the discount alone, first of all. <laughs> that's, that's like and the free things. samples. And, and the free samples. But <laughs> that's a whole thing that, again, when you, I've tra I travel a little bit and you go to places and you go to their, their dispensaries are nothing like what we have here. No. Um, because we're so, it's, again, we get a lot of people coming here. Mm -hmm. Every single month, whether you're a visitor or you're a resident, to, to move here. And so, and people love love their cannabis. Mm -hmm. Love their cannabis, whether yeah. it's flour or gummies or sips or whatever. It's like, oh my God. And or edibles, like take take gummies out of it. The whole edible industry now yeah. is I I have a buddy in New York that has chocolate. He had them and my girlfriend and I tried. I couldn't, I felt like I, I roofied myself. <laughs> I had like two squares of chocolate. I was like dead from the neck down. Oh, you did double squares. Yes. Ooh. Yes. Because that's what you do when you're Gen X. Because you still think you're at the kegger. Keg, yeah. You think you're at the kegger with a red solo cup, standing around the keg, and you're the guy holding the spigot, <laughs> giving out the giving out the beer to everybody. And yeah, that was me. I still think I can do that. I'm like, what are you doing, Jeffrey Mark Fargo? It, it, what, it doesn't hit you, you until you're like ten minutes in, and you realize like, oh, this isn't going to go away. What have I done? I'm I'm like I, I kept sinking into his in, into his um his couch, his sectional, deeper and deeper and I go over at my girl and she's looking at me and we're both just like, Oh boy. We're fine. Okay, well hold my hand. I've got you. I love you. <laughs> we're in for this ride together, honey. What's your favorite thing to do when the gummies hit or when the edibles hit? Ooh, um, I'm I'm a like I'm I'm just getting done rewatching Game of Thrones right now. Okay, right, I'm on season eight right now. Okay, so I just before that uh, I did Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yeah, so I like to I like to get high and watch like really good, well written TV shows. Yes, that I've already watched before, but I give it some time so you forget a lot of stuff or you learn some stuff as you're watching it. Yeah, and I do that. Yeah, uh, another great one is The Wire. Oh, the best show of all time. The best TV, the best TV show of all time. Of all time. Of all time. Is The Wire. Yes. And if anybody wants to debate me or Brandon, please slide in the comments because I'll I will fucking oh, yeah. to the teeth oh, yeah. defend the wire as Remember the best how earlier show we were ever. talking about how we don't react to comments? If you I'm telling you right now, if you say something negative about the wire, I will quit my day job to argue with you online. I will. You you have triggered you have triggered my offended button, and I will fight you to the death online. I promise you about that. Same. Best show ever. Same. What do you? What's your favorite season of The Wire? Oh my god. Um, who is the guy? Because now it's been a while since I watched it. Who's the guy with the the, the black guy with the cut? He just died. Omar. Omar. The gay. The goat. When Omar gets introduced, that was to me the best because you begin his story arc. Yeah. Of of who he of who he was because yeah. he was a nasty motherfucker. Oh yeah. But also was good to his people. Oh yeah. And good to like if you're if you're solid with again respect. That's like an East Coast thing. Yeah. And if you're good to him, he's good to you. But like, I love any, any, when, when he came in and then, um, the English guy, bald black guy. Oh, um, uh, Stringer Bell, Stringer Bell. Oh wait, the bald black yes, guy. Yes, Stringer Bell. Uh, no, uh, no, had, no, you're right. I, I was wrong with, with bald. Stringer Bell. Stringer Bell. Yeah. Like, it was so well done. And the guy, the, the white guy who's actually English, but comes off as an American. The best cop of all time. Right? And remember, <laughs> and he would do his stupid English accent. Yeah. Like, it's just stuff like that and how it does a duality between the press and the police. Oh, yeah. And dual story arcs at the yes. same time coming yes. up. And this is back when newspapers were a thing where they're not really now. Yeah, we're talking about newspapers. And people are like, we were talking about press. Yeah. It's it's that kind of it was just so well done, Brandon. I love it. The Wire's the only show that's willing to take it to the limit of how poor people and powerful people are connected, right? 
the politician needs numbers to go down, so he gets reelected. So the police chief, who needs the politician to keep him hired, puts pressure on his cops to start arresting people selling drugs, right? And it just shows you the chain of events that leads this, this, this. One drug dealer kills somebody in the wrong area, and this gets this politician fired, and it's just like, oh, shit, right? A politician needs money. Drugs are untrackable. Who can bring the drugs in? Well, wait, and all the little things that you didn't want to connect or didn't think about, the wires like, no, motherfucker. Wasn't the mayor Littlefinger? Yeah, look, Garcetti, Garcetti, yeah. Right? Yeah, he's always been, man, he plays the perfect snake. And I, and he's so good, I need, to, I need to Google it to see, is he English? Is he United, is he American? I don't know. Are you like me that whenever I see a good white actor, I'm like, oh, you're British for sure, right? You're, I don't know what it is about the British people, but they have mastered being an American douchebag better than Dude, anybody I've ever met. They can fuck us up because of, I love, and in a good way, because they have centuries of history behind them. Yeah. Right? We're, we're the new kids in the block still at 250 yeah. years old. We're, come on. And for them, like, look at anything that Ricky Gervais has done. Yeah. Any show he's done. The Office. Is... The original office yeah. is so, I'm, I'm actually speaking of the office, the American one. I'm watching that now with my 15 year old daughter for the first time. What does she think? Is, does it, she humor, loves it. It still translates? She loves Jim. Okay. I mean, who doesn't love Jim? Yeah, he's, if, he's, if you don't love Jim, North Korea is that way. Get the fuck out of my yeah, country. He's get the, out. He's the perfect every man, right? Right. The perfectly written every man. Yeah. And that show is so well done. And we're on like season four or five now. She loves it. And as a dad, I'm like, I'm winning. Every second I'm with her, the funny part with her, and she's funnier than shit, is that we're watching that. We're also watching a show that was on for about, it's, there's three seasons, Hannibal. Hannibal. I remember, I never, I never Dude, caught anything past the first episode. Never. I never watched it. I mean, I saw the movies. Yeah. It is the most disturbingly written TV show I've ever seen in my life. Really? I cannot watch more than one episode at a time because it's so disturbing. Mentally or like, is it graphic? Both. Oh. It is, Brandon, to the point where I can't believe it was on TV, that they let it on NBC. And it was only on for three seasons. It's about six years old now, but oh my God, like graphic gore. And talk about, to me, it's the best written, produced, and filmed with a cinematography of a psychological horror series ever. Really? Ever. But it's disturbing. Like I, both my daughter and I, Alex, we tried to watch two episodes in a row and she has nightmares and I have trouble going to sleep. Oh God. It's that, it's that much where, so what we do is yin and yang, we'll watch six episodes of The Office and be feeling <laughs> all good. And then you throw in one Hannibal, Hannibal. like, oh shit. Yeah. And now we're done. <laughs> is, it, is there something wrong with me that you're like, Brandon, I'm having nightmares and my, I can't sleep. And I'm like, I might go watch this today as soon as I get home. I'm <laughs> no, do it. Do it. It's, it again because you're someone that appreciates good video. You, you appreciate yeah. that well written stuff. Yeah. And whoever did Hannibal is just holy shit. Uh, Lawrence Fishburne's in it. I like Lawrence. Um, Fishburne. There's a lot of characters from the movies that are that uh, that are portrayed, okay. and there's a lot of similarities from the movies that you'll see certain scenes that they take, but. It's disturbing. Hannibal is the goriest, most disturbing show ever put on TV. Really? Ever. Have you ever seen, uh, what was that show on HBO, Mind Hunters? Yes. Where they were, oh, it's, it's worse than that. hundred times worse. Really? Because yeah. that's HBO. They can get kind of nasty over and there. Mind Hunters is, was good. Like the big tall guy that was a mass murderer. Yeah, yeah. Cut off I, his mom's head and shit. I could, I could kill you right now before the guard comes in. Like so well done. Yeah. I, and I love shows. Anything that's based on a real life. Yeah. I love um, like I just got done watching another show I watched because I was high as fuck. Uh, Vikings, <laughs> great show. Vikings. I'm on my phone googling how much you know Ragnar, whoever. Yeah. Like how much of this actually happening? And and like oh here's Ragnar's son's burial tomb is in Norway on this mountain. You're like oh shit, this really fucking happened. This really like. 80% of it really did happen. Yeah. I love looking at if a if a show or if a movie says based on real life events, you've got me. 
you've it's either that or like I'm taking my daughter tonight to go see uh, Deadpool Wolverine, Wolverine yeah, yeah, yeah. right I want to see someone's going to make me laugh or shit's going to blow up in my face or you're in outer space yeah. and I'll go to galaxy theaters and recline and I got to wear a little and beer even, even though it's 110 degrees out I'm going to wear gray sweatpants and a hoodie and my wool socks with my slides it's cold it's as, cold as shit in cold there cold as shit in there <laughs> so I know ahead of time and and I love watching and being enveloped with that type of entertainment but if it's based on real life, you've got me. Yeah. Are you, were you a history guy growing up or are movies and TV shows like your medium to transport you into history? The latter. It's, it's, it's my medium. Okay. Um, and that's why when I was younger, I, I didn't have an appreciation for it. I was just yeah. self-absorbed. I was an only child. Family came from money, narcissistic, uh, all about me, 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 and bravado. Yeah. And everything. I really didn't give myself enough grace to take a step back to learn what's going on yeah. in terms of historical events. And so now I'm much more dialed down and relaxed and comfortable with who I am. No sense of having to prove myself to anybody anymore. And so I'm all about learning from other people's experiences. Okay. Whether it's sitting here with on my podcast or watching Hannibal. <laughs> And you're like, this is written by like the guy who wrote all the books, like did all this research on mass murders and to do like Vikings is gory, extremely gory. And to me, if you can get it to where like even uh, Game of Thrones is so well done with the gore, you're like, that almost looked real. Yeah. Like when they're slicing people's yeah, throats and the blood's coming out and I'm, I'm stopping it in 4k and looking to see if I could see where like they place the thing, you know, over the person, the actor's neck and you can yeah. barely see it. That's the stuff I like. It's oh, you get intricate. You pause. Love You're it. searching for it. Dude. So there's, to me, there's, 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 there's a moment in game of Thrones where, you know, you're in or you're out. When the red wedding hits, <gasps> I had read the books, right? I'm one of them old school nerds, right? But I'm sitting there with my now wife, you know, and she's watching the show and I know the Red Wedding's coming, right? And I'm not telling her, I'm just letting her. She's like, oh my God, I love Rob Stark. He's my favorite character. He's going to lead them against the Lannisters. And I'm like, yeah, baby, he's he's great. And when that episode hits and they start stabbing pre his pregnant wife and they slit his throat in front of his mom and you're like, and I'm looking at her face and it's a mix of like, I'm horrified, but also... Oh, I'm so fucking in. Like, I'm all the way Walter in. Walter Frey. Walter Frey. Because it's not gore for the sake of just being gory. It's gory to tell you a story of like, no, this is really how it is in the world of the powerful. Like, we will betray you. We will destroy you in the most vile, vicious way imaginable. We're here to end your family line kind of shit, you yeah. know? And I think you're right. Gore can be a good storytelling device because it needs to shock you and be like, oh shit, real life is insane. I grew up in taking off from school and going back to my house with buddies of mine and we'd, we'd have weed and we'd stop and get a VHS of like, I spit on your grave or, fa <laughs> or faces of death. Oh, you are the face of the death guy. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. And so, and you're watching all this going, oh, this is, and you think it's face of the death. You're like, oh, this is real. This yeah. is all real. And, yeah. and, you're, and it's, I grew up looking, watching that type of gore, especially like, like my, I spit in your grave. It's like, come on. Yeah. Like guy gets his wiener cut off in the bathtub and yeah. you know, it's a whole thing. And to look at now with, let's say game of Thrones. And I, I'm, I'm halfway through the last season right now. And it's just so well done. I know the ending is the worst and I'm waiting for it because I'm just like, it's like douche chills. Yeah. And it's like, oh God, here we come. Yeah. But it's it's still 95% of it is so well done. So well done. And you look at something like that and what's gone on in terms of TV and there's still some good shows that are out there. You know, like the the reboot that they're doing is is pretty good. Yeah. Um. It's it it's okay. It's not great, but it's okay. I'm curious to bring it back to Vegas. Look at Mark Wahlberg, who's bringing Hollywood 2.0 here. Yeah. And one of the biggest hate comments I get on my one that went viral about how Summerlin's great, Mark Mark Wahlberg is here. He just moved here for the taxes. Yeah. I'm like, and my my reply to them is, and but that's why everybody from California is moving here. Yeah. But what are your are your feelings on because it's called a Hollywood 2.0 and they're taking down a bunch of property yeah. over on the west side of town, like yeah. a shitload. And yeah. they've already gone up to Carson City and 
Gov. Lombardo is already like, they're behind it. Like, that's the thing about Vegas. Like, with the football stadium, when we get behind something, it's a done deal. Yeah. It's a done deal. Love it or hate it. Yes, the schools are tough. Yes, our healthcare is not the best. But when we want to get something done in terms of economic development, it's done. Yeah. I'm 50 50 on this. Uh, and I'm, I'll be honest with you. I'm Please. 50, I'm 50 50 on this. Um, the half of me who loves seeing Vegas grow economically, where we're no longer stuck with the same five jobs, where either you work in a hotel, you work in customer service, or get fucked, you know? Um, I like that we have jobs here. I like that there's options for people. I do. I like because Hollywood coming here is like a Raiders coming here. When the Raiders came here, there's new jobs. Uh, how many restaurants are in Raider Stadium making a massive profit now that they get to be in the stadium, right? Like, I like that part of it. But the whole Hollywood 2.0 thing, Vegas is the anti-Hollywood. We don't hide. Like, Hollywood has all these secret parties where it's like, behind closed doors, we do drugs. No, this is Vegas. We do drugs right on the table, right? We're the anti-Hollywood. We're in your face with our with our debauchery, that's how it's been, you know, and Vegas culture believes in that. We believe in serving other people, working as hard as we play. That's our mentality. And we're very protective of that. And so this idea that they're going to make us Hollywood, we don't, we don't need to be Hollywood 2.0. We're Vegas. We're not the 2.0 of fucking anything. Other cities want to be Vegas 2.0, right? We're us. We're original. We don't need to change. We don't need to add any of that shit. And so it does frustrate me. It does bother me that Mark Wahlberg and they're buying all this land in premium areas that we could be building housing. It bothers me that we have money for sports stadiums in Hollywood, but we can't find money to pay these fucking teachers the salary that they're asking for. It bothers me that we 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 they, they took cannabis money, used that for the teacher budget, then the teacher budget just magically disappeared. But we have and but the money magically appears for stadiums and magically appears for Mark Wahlberg, like. I'd rather have that money go to people that are here. If Hollywood wants to come here and spend their money and make movies here, I'm all for that. I'm an American. Make your money. But like, don't try to call us Hollywood 2.0. We're Vegas. You want to bring some of your Hollywood friends here? Fantastic. I got you. But we're not 2.0 of fucking anything. I love you so much. I fucking love that take, dudes. I, I love that take so much. Let's talk a little bit about, and this is some some stuff regarding that I, I know I've I've gate kept for a while, the corruption in Vegas. Cool. Let's talk about it. We've got a little bit of time. Okay. All right. Where do you see some of the most corrupt areas in Vegas, and why? The school system, the Las Vegas school system. It's the most absurdly corrupt. And we live in casinos where corruption is a part of the business strategy. The corruption with Vegas schools where they replace one leader with a shittier leader and no one ever gets anything done where we replace Jara, but now the person replacing them, no one's happy with that either. Or like I just said earlier, we all voted for cannabis to be legalized with the main Goal was cannabis tax money was going to be put towards the education budget. That is literally why we you can you can track it through the review journal. That is the number one thing they pushed on Vegas. We are going to use this cannabis money to pay the teachers and put towards education so we can stop being 48th in the fucking nation. Okay. When I was doing my COVID teacher drive, I was speaking to teachers because I was getting a lot of donation money from Cannabis, spoilers, guys, a lot of the money we donated came from cannabis. And everybody in cannabis was saying, well, why are we donating more to teachers when we're getting taxed millions and millions of dollars, 40% taxes, and it's supposed to go into education? Well, I started doing some research, started doing some digging. The money, the cannabis tax money did go to education, but then they took the previous education budget and no one had a fucking clue where it went. This is back in 2020. And... No one has answers. If you talk to anybody at any newspaper or anybody, they freeze up. No one has an answer for you. If you try to talk to teachers about it, they don't have an answer. You can't get a clear answer for anybody of where the education budget went. No thing. And it's like nobody fucking cares because education is just not supposed to be a big deal in Vegas. But we have millions of people moving here. 
who care about education, people who want to raise their kids here. And we just can't seem to get it figured out. And no matter who gets elected, no one, no one seems to want to put a focus on this. And I have the same question I've had for years. Where did the money go? Where did the money go? If anybody's watching this who's a teacher or is in education and you want to correct me, I am open to being corrected, but I want to know where the fucking money went. I'm tired of teachers having to strike and rally and do all this shit. I'm tired of every year I have to raise thousands of dollars to help teachers get supplies they need to teach their own classes. I know I'm going on about this, but you've triggered the only thing I legitimately care about. And it's the kids of Vegas deserve the same education that the kids of New York and Oklahoma and all these other states get. And I'm tired of being 48th. And the only reason we're still there is because it's corrupt and no one seems to be wanting to deal with this shit. The system is, it's like Washington, D.C. The system is broken. It is so big. Like how we don't have North Las Vegas School District, Summerlin School District, Henderson School District, Vegas proper school district is beyond me. The absolute numbness of the bureaucracy of the Clark County School District is mind-boggling yes. to me. And to me, it's always follow the money. Who is it that's going to benefit from this? Is it the unions? Are they the ones? I don't know. If you know, jump in. But is it the unions that are saying, nope, we keep it just like this, and this is how it should be? Um, my, my ex-wife is a teacher still now. When we first moved here, I remember there was like all this stuff when she would go register for, and there was like the teachers union had this massive thing in one of the convention centers. Mm -hmm. And it was where all the teachers, you had to go there to sign up to do stuff for like CE classes. Mm -hmm. And here's all these people wearing these shirts that all say the teachers, it, it was recruiting for the union. They are mobilized, they are well-funded, mm -hmm. and they have a fucking agenda. Mm -hmm. Pure and simple. Mm -hmm. I think they're a major reason for it. I'm, I'm not anti-union, but I, I need to see somewhere, for someone to convince me of the teacher's union of why it's a good thing. Um, I'm from New York. I have friends that are about to retire 30 years in as teachers, and they're mm -hmm. going to have 60, 70 grand a year for the rest of their lives, yep. as they should. It yep. should be double that. 100%. With full benefits. 100%. should be double that. 100%. What they get. And the fact that I got uh, my, my son, bless his heart, where his school he goes, we got in the gate program, gifted and talented. talented. So not only am I getting an email from his teacher, about my Amazon wish list. I'm now getting one from the gate teacher, Amazon wish list, which I am so lucky to be in a financial point in my life. I am happy to give. Yeah. I overgive. Yeah. Because I don't want her to worry about reams of paper. Yeah. Or sticky notes. Oh my God. And I, I can't believe we have to come up and give money to that when 40% of the cannabis revenue is supposed to be going to education. Where's the money going? Cannabis revenue taxes are now approaching 50, 60, 75 million dollars. Why are we buying teachers paper? Why are we buying teachers pens? For what reason? And why will no one talk about it? Why, if you talk to someone at the RJ or at the, you know, at Greenspun, why will no one talk about that? They won't. And I think that is, and I asked the question, I kind of, and I kind of know what you were going to say ahead of time, because I've seen your stuff. And what you do is amazing. It is yeoman's work in terms of the fundraisers you have and how you leverage your brand for good. And you, you should be given all the credit in the world for that, my friend. That's like, bravo. But you shouldn't have to be doing that. And shame on CCSD. They're lucky to have people like you step up. But where's the money going? And more importantly, why will no one talk about where the money is going that's supposed to go to the Clark County School District? That's, that's, that's what infuriates me the most is no one wants to talk about it. When we were doing our COVID drive in 2020 to help people get back on their feet and get teachers what they need, we had news channels coming out and filming us. We had newspapers reaching out to us about the drive. And they were so happy to come out and get media coverage of the charity work. But when we asked them, where did the money go? Silence. No one wanted to say anything. Everything was behind a wall. 
everything. When you even, I've emailed the news, I've emailed CCSD. I can show people my emails. I've emailed, I've emailed CCSD about this. You have $26,000 to send teachers to Miami to recruit where they recruited zero teachers, but you don't have money to buy your teachers the basic necessities. It's not just one thing with CCSD and the union. There's 10 trillion things, but the teachers are too scared to speak out because yeah. CCSD is one of the, at this point, I believe it's the fifth largest school district in the country. And the reason that's the answer, I found this out the hard way. If Henderson was to break off from the rest of Clark County, like they want to, Henderson would probably be a top 20, 25 school district in the country. And Las Vegas would be so far below the worst. It would be laughable and we would lose all of our government funding. And I think, I think, I hope somebody watches this podcast and starts asking questions. I do, honestly. As much as I have fun with you, as much as I enjoy talking shit and laughing, I hope somebody from CCSD or some teacher has the balls to say, fuck it. Fuck it. I'm going to put the kids ahead of my job and I'm going to talk about this because until the teachers are willing to come out and talk, we're just two schmoes. Yeah. We're just two guys. We don't we don't have any answers. I, I think that the way to go now, you're not going to get your news anymore from the RJ, from the Las Vegas Review Journal or the Las Vegas Sun. You're going to start getting your news from podcasts, from guys like us that live here and have been here for a little while and kind of know what's going on. Yeah. And I know that I have open invitation. If you're, a, if you're a member of CCSD or you've got insider stuff and you want to come on and talk about it, you get a hold of me. I will part heaven and earth for you to come on this show and give you an open, fair platform to talk from anytime. And I know if anybody else is starting a podcast and they're looking to have somebody come on, I'm looking at you, motherfucker. And they, and they want to be given a safe place to come on where they can be, they can be heard and it, there won't be an agenda. It won't be edited in a way that, you know, to, to an agenda, it's going to be completely like, like, like X is like Twitter is now you can just put it out there and do that. That's, what I've done here is this, po this podcast isn't a niche podcast. I'm everything. I've had adult film stars on. I've had influencers on. I've had people that I just think are good people with small followings on social media, but boy, they've got a good story to tell. Yeah. And I have them come on. I always say you're a good candidate to come on Fargo Talks if you're somebody that we could go out to Hank's and have a dirty martini together yeah. and shoot the shit for an hour, hour and a half. Because that's what we're going to do here. Yeah. Same thing. And if, if you're somebody that has a story to tell, especially if you're a retired teacher from Clark County School District and you have nothing to lose and you're like, I've got some stuff I want to unburden myself about, you get a hold of me. Yeah. I'm happy to have you on here and give from a, a place of respect. Um, that's what they have to understand. I think old school people are used to reading the newspaper where there's somebody at the editorial board and even with TV now, you know, you've got left ring, white ring, you've got MSNBC, Fox. There's nowhere that you can really watch something on TV now that's not slanted left or right, which bothers me. I'm a registered independent, Brandon. Yeah. People think I'm a Trumper. I'm not. But back when Biden was running, I was like, if I got to pick the lesser of two evils, I'm yeah. going with Trump. At least yeah. he can formulate a sentence. 100%. And especially the guy almost gets his head taken off. And the first thing he does is get up and say, fight. In terms of a fight or flight person, yeah. he's got my vote. Yeah. Especially over a woman that is now, who's going to be the candidate very soon, unproven. We're in two proxy wars overseas in Ukraine and in the Middle East. And she has zero experience. At least Trump already, you know, was in the seat for four years. Yeah. Is he my first choice? Hell no. But I get pigeonholed a lot as being this like right wing conservative guy. And I'm not. I think it's weird that we live in a world that's so against racism and prejudice, but we're so quick to call each other Trumpers and libtards yeah. without realizing that you're literally just putting people in a box to judge them. You're that's prejudice, right? But because, like you said, the media doesn't discuss these things because the media is so involved in creating these camps, per se, there's no one there to talk about it, right? Prejudice is prejudice. 
Yeah. Right? If you're going to judge me and put me in a box and demonize me because of who I vote for, how is that not racism? You're just judging me. Instead of judging me on the color of my skin, you're judging me on my vote, but you're still judging me without understanding me. And I think that's very weird. We live in this politically correct world where like you're not allowed to shame or judge anything, but you are allowed to judge me if I don't vote Democratic. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in calling anybody any names. I'm like you. I would prefer to be independent. If I had my choice, I would prefer to be, I voted for Barack. I have voted on every side of the aisle because I vote for what's best for me and my family, me and my community. Yeah. But if I have to be put into a box, I'll, I'll join you. I'll just jump right into the Trump box. I just want somebody who's good at business, right? I want, I want pro-economy, yeah. pro-business, yeah. someone that's going to protect me, but also, can we please get the debt down? We're like $75 trillion. Yeah. We're spending money overseas on stuff. And meanwhile, we, we can't pay our bills here. Yeah. Southern borders are hemorrhaging. Like that's, that's just, this is factual stuff. This isn't an agenda. This is really happening. And to anyone that's like looking for, like, again, my favorite place for news now is X, Twitter. Yeah. Because you get like when Trump was, was uh, shot, it was within minutes stuff is coming up and I'm at my dad's in Canada, New York with my kids. I'm on Twitter watching what's going on. There's about a 20 to 30 minute delay before you saw it on TV. Yeah, because they had to come up with the narrative. They had to come up with which angles they were going to show. They had to come up with, uh, I remember I saw one screenshot that said, it couldn't be a CNN or NBC, where it was just like, Trump leaves rally early because of big noises. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> what are you doing? You know, and it's impossible to get the news from the news. It's impossible to get the news from the news. It's literally not possible anymore. It's the only place now that I see the last bastion of hope for anyone to get their news is podcasts. Yeah, this is it. And for anyone coming on this show on, you know, if you're going to do a podcast that it's, you give them a place to talk Yes. Whether you are Republican, Democrat, Independent, right to life, I don't care. Doesn't matter. As long as you are eloquent, respectful, and knowledgeable. Yes. Respectful is the biggest one. Respectful is the biggest one. Biggest one. The greatest cherry on top, if I can get it, is you're entertaining. Yeah. And you're and you're willing to be just open and transparent and to just bear your soul. Yep. So many people, and that's how you're good at it. I've gotten good at it. Is you get in here, you forget there's cameras here. And it's just two people shooting the shit. Just having a conversation. Just having a conversation. Yeah. And there's no filter in what gets said. No. You're not holding back. Um, I've had people that have come on. I've had people I've politely declined to come on because they've said, well, I need questions ahead of time. I don't do that. No. I'm not going to give you my questions. I might have some stuff written down, yeah. some notes, but I don't have any pre-created pre questions yes. to ask a guest. That's the beauty of this medium. It's got to be I'm not an influencer because influence is political. And as you stated at the very beginning, my goal is always just to be, I'm just a fucking dude, man. I'm just an asshole from Vegas that for some reason people like watching on camera, right? My videos aren't great. In fact, my videos suck on purpose, guys. Spoilers, they suck on purpose. But it's because I'm like you. Most of us aren't good with video. We're not good with camera. We're just genuine fucking people. You know, and I can't filter myself. I don't know how I get in trouble for it all the time. I get banned on TikTok once per week, but I can't filter myself. To me, we live in the golden age of truth telling. We live in the golden age of truth telling where I can get podcast clicks just by telling people the truth. Hey, men and women are different. Oh my God. Hey, judging people based on they vote, that's a form of racism too. Like, right? Like just going on here and telling people the truth, having an honest conversation, to me, this is why podcast to me is the best medium in the world right now. People need to communicate in an honest and genuine way. And this allows us to do it. You've you've given me a stage to not just talk about the shit like food and all the, the Vegas stuff, but something I genuinely care about. You give, you've given me a platform I don't even have on my own platform. I genuinely, that's why whenever you, whenever I'm invited to this, I'm an instant yes. I will clear my whole schedule to be here with you because you're a genuine person and you give a shit and you're honest and you're vulnerable and you're open. And I hope the people watching this can see it, man. 
Yeah, I don't know if you, this man is, this man is exactly who he says he is. And I'm, I'm, I'm honored to be here, sincerely. Thank you. I appreciate it. I, I would love to, like every few months, have you come on. For us just to talk. No agenda, no nothing. Yeah, if there's places that you've, you've gone to that, you know, food places, yes. But really, Brandon, I love your brain. I love your brain. I love that you are willing to be vulnerable. That is something that you can't teach somebody. You either come in here and you sit down and you're vulnerable or you're not. And I can tell within the first 30 seconds if someone's going to be vulnerable or not, whether it's, you know, and gotten better at it. So now avoid the people that are not. I appreciate you coming in and being the real you. Um, I'm honored to have you on. Thank, Thank you, my friend. You, man. I, uh, the next time I'm on, can we talk about strip clubs? <gasps> well, we can talk about right now if you want yeah? to. Yeah? Okay. Your top three strip clubs, go. That's the worst question you're going to ask me. <laughs> all right, you can go fuck yourself because, all right, I'll tell you, back when I was single. Okay. Uh, my favorite place was the OG. Okay. Love the OG. Dino loved you. Dino was my man, was the bartender. And I'd go in there and I was, this was, oh my God, 15 years ago. Okay. And I'd go, I was living in St. George, Utah, but I'd come over here and, and go to the OG was the best. I love the OG and the Spearmint Rhino were my places to go. Now, full disclosure, I have not walked into a strip joint in 15 years. Okay. Okay. Respect. Yeah. Um, Respect. Just because it's, it's not my thing anymore, but also having been, I was a title, I was a title rep here for years. I had clients that were realtors <laughs> that were also strippers <laughs> that were in adult entertainment. And I knew, and I respected them because of the money and the, the business model, yeah. the entrepreneurial spirit that they have. Girls are smart. Smart, smart. And so how they could it's like, like, these are not the droids you're looking for. You these know, are not the right? Like the Obi-Wan Kenobi yeah. thing is like, that's what they do because of the physical attributes they have. But really it's up here. Yeah. The cerebral power that these women have yeah. to, to take advantage over a man to get every single dollar mm -hmm. from them. I, I have great respect for that. I so, know exotic <sighs> dancers and adult actresses who are better at business than 99% of the men that I meet. They have found a way to capitalize and market every inch of what it is that they do for profit. Man, they are they are smart. Those girls live in McDonald's Highlands. Those girls live in the ridges. Those girls are making work right now, honestly. Okay, so do you want me to go from uh, three, two, one, or one, two, three? Let's do your top three. Okay. Uh, strip clubs in Las Vegas, starting from three up to one and why? Okay. Number three, Sapphire. It is the Walmart of strip clubs. It is just whatever your brand is, Sapphire's got your brand. It's so big and there's so many girls there that like, <sighs> It's impossible to miss. You're going to find a girl that catches your fancy. <laughs> it's the Walmart of strip clubs. Yeah. It's the best analogy ever. <laughs> I've been there years ago, and yeah. yes, go ahead, continue. It's massive, right? Oh. Little pro tip for my boys who are coming in. Sapphire has a pool party. The pool party is not necessarily fully clothed. You're welcome. Number two, Larry Flint's Hustler Club. Now, most people are going to say Spearmint Rhino, but you need one kind of just like, over the top kind of grimy strip club. And I think Larry Flint's hits that. The rooftop deck does EDM parties till like five in the morning. If you're into a classier strip club, something that's higher end, Spearman Rhino is always, always number two. But if you're looking for something for a bit more party centric, a bit more fun, Larry Flint's Hustler Club. And number one, it will be number one until the day I die. It's been number one since I was 17 years old with my fake ID sneaking into strip clubs. Chica Bonitas over in the dirty section off of Fremont Street. It doesn't look like much, but the parking lot's always packed for a reason. Thick Latinas, 24-7, cheap Coronas. It is, to me, the quintessential Vegas strip club. It still has that old school Vegas feel. And if you like Latin girls, like all of you should, only Latin girls there, premium number one. Some of the most beautiful women I've ever seen, and this is with my girlfriend, South Beach. Mm. There is nothing under an 8.5 there. We've been there twice. And the first time was last year, and we see it right on South Beach. We're right there. 
And I asked our server, I said, bring out one of the dish kids. I guarantee he or she is an eight. <laughs> There's no one here that's, that's like, uh, not, like, that's ugly. Yes. And they're all nice and friendly and warm. And you're like, oh my, and gorgeous. Yeah. Men and women, b- flawless. Yeah. Flawless with that dark, the darker skin mm-hmm. and the, the butts and the shapes and, and the guys are fit. You're like, oh my, I, I had to go up the room and do, do like five crunches. Just <laughs> out of shame. <laughs> I got to get my shit together. Shame. 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 Dude. I'll never forget this. I've never been to Miami myself, right? It's on my, my bucket list of place to go. Uh, when I worked in uh, Encore Beach Club back in the day, we had, I'll never forget this, four Brazilian girls from Miami showed up to my nightclub and almost shut the place down to the point where like security had to always have eyes on someone there because of like, it was four Brazilian girls with, we didn't know what BBLs were at the time. This was like after 20, right? The biggest BBLs and in the Brazilian way, they just walked around in string bikinis. So imagine four sexy Miami Brazilian girls in string bikinis walking around a pool club with a bunch of drunk dudes. It was like, it was like a fifth grader seeing porn for the first time. It was just like, oh, oh, dudes were freaking out, jumping out the pool. Like, I mean, if those girls had wanted a Lamborghini that day, someone would have gave them one, man. So Miami, shout out to you. Much respect. Your girls are chef's kiss. Well, well done. Well, well done. It, it is uh it is something that they're just bred <laughs> bred in a way. It's it's like you know, Lexington, Kentucky, yeah. like these women are stallions. just stallions, right? Okay, if Miami's number one for hottest girls in America, which I think we all can agree with, like, come on, let's let's not kid ourselves. Where's Vegas rank on that list for you? It's funny you ask that because my my most watched clip, my buddy Brandon Bowski came in here and Bowski's the man because he just, he slings it and doesn't give a fuck what you have to say in return. Yeah. And he came out and said, Scottsdale is the, is, the, is the hottest women. A Scottsdale 10 is a Miami 15. If you... I saw that episode and I wanted to jump through this screen and, and have an argument with him. That's why I'm doing this now. He forgot to say, if you like hot, pretty white girls. Yes. When that's the biggest form of hate coming in is, well, it's all tall blonde women and they're, you know, fake boobs and the whole thing with the butt lifts and everything else. I'm like, well, and my reply back, because I replied almost all my comments is, but that's a look some people like. Yeah. Like, and my my girlfriend is, my girlfriend's a 10. She's a redhead with a thigh gap and she's. 43, so there's a four in there, so it's not creepy, me being 54. <laughs> if there's a two or a three, three. we'd have trouble. <laughs> there's a four, I'm good, I'm good. And I think that she just, and it, she just rocks my boat, man. Yeah. She is, I, I, we're living together now, I stare at her all the time, all the time I'm looking at her. She still gives you the boner, that's good. Every time. That's good. Every man. time. And so, but before her, it was blondes. It was the look that, like, I would have loved to have gone to Scottsdale. Yeah. And 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 those women that, like, tan, blonde, fit yeah. is what was my thing. I call them golf cart girls. Absolutely golf cart girls. Golf cart girls. Absolutely. Yeah. And to see, again, I, I use my social media. I'm a big data guy. Okay. So I'm like, okay, what's the demographic and what's going on here? And, like, people, I've had people all over the world chime in. Well, they've never been, this guy has never been to Croatia. He's never been to Brazil. Like they're saying places all over the world. But to answer your question, some people said Vegas. I'm someone now that I can, and I'm comfortable saying this and my girl's cool with it. I could say she's attractive. I'm not attracted to her. Big yeah. difference, right? Yeah, yeah. I'll go to, I go to a really nice gym here in town. I go with my daughter and my son, which is, I love that to bond yeah. with, with my daughter, especially we'll work out together. And there's some girls in there. I'm like, they're gorgeous. I've never seen that before at a gym. Like they're very attractive women that are working on themselves and they're younger, like twenties, thirties, but working on themselves. And I've never seen that before. Um, I think, so I think Vegas is, I would say in the top five in terms of attractive women, top five. Yes. Absolutely. The guy earlier said, oh, you've never been to Croatia. You've never been to Brazil. Brother, if you've worked in a Vegas nightclub, You've met women from Croatia. They come here. The most beautiful women from Croatia come to Vegas. <laughs> they, the most beautiful women from Brazil come to Vegas. Uh, we've got women from it, the women who live here. It's hard to know because obviously so many, it's such a transient neighborhood, 
But in any Vegas nightclub, on any given Saturday, there's porn stars, there's uh, exotic dancers, strippers, some of you guys would call them. There's a girl from Brazil. There's a girl from Miami. There's the hottest girl in Nebraska. There's this girl in Iowa who's way too hot for her city, so she's in Vegas trying to find a guy that's different than Iowa, right? Like, on a Saturday night in Vegas is a collection of, maybe not Miami quality, but a collection of some of the most beautiful women on planet Earth because they all want to come here and visit. Here's the thing that people, if you take a step back in terms of looks, what a man looks for in a woman, yeah. it's a matter of perspective. Yes. And that's the number one answer I give as a, as a reply. I just put perspective. Perspective, yeah. Back. Because... Someone that looks at somebody from Scottsdale and there's someone else that says, no, girls in Miami are hotter. Well, they're not into the olive skinned Brazilian butt lift, you know, shapely, dark, dark haired girls. Of course. And that's okay. Of course. That's totally okay. I, I have never dated a redhead in my life who lived in Tampa, met her on Bumble travel mode a year and a half ago when I was flying back and forth every other weekend to take care of my mom yeah. and got tired of dating here, just made a lot of friends, but nobody long-term. Yeah. And so went on some dates with girls there that were gorgeous, but no connection. And my first date with Brandy, she made me dinner at her house. Hey. And we've been talking for over a month. So it was cool. And I was the first guy she ever invited over. She is a four-star chef. Okay. Like she's phenomenal how she can she's from northern georgia Ooh. yeah like Ooh. we just drove last week we left on saturday or saturday morning we left and came up from tampa up to winder georgia uh outside of athens i met her 91 year old grandmother who's on who's on facebook and slides into my comments all the time <laughs> <laughs> Which Brandy dies. She slid into right? the end. Took boy. one of the most adorable pictures of of Norma and I. Yeah. And I, on old people, I'm a sponge. I just I listen because of that's just that's a part of history that's not going to be around for a long time. And she's wonderful. And then we drove across country, and it took two and a half days, and came across from Atlanta, Little Rock, Arkansas, Albuquerque, here, with my girlfriend, her 15 year old daughter, a dog, and a cat. Damn. Yep. In a in a um, Toyota Rav4. Damn. Done. And Y'all got real close, and and got and got along well, and it was great in terms of bonding. And I, I felt deeper in love with my with my girl, yeah, with my girlfriend. But she's my type, and I wasn't looking for a redhead. And we always joke about this. Her profile picture, her profile biggest two red flags for me. She was wearing sunglasses. The eyes are the window to the soul. Yeah. Don't wear sunglasses on your profile picture on a dating app. Yeah. Stupidest thing ever. Yeah. She was wearing sunglasses and she said she owned a cat. I wasn't a cat person. <laughs> now, me and Frankie are fucking best friends. I love her. Yeah. I, I love Frankie. Frankie's awesome. It's, I was with a laser pointer yesterday playing with going, Frankie. She's going nuts. Yes, right? losing her mind. Yeah. And so I changed my perception of what I found to be the ultimate beautiful woman for me Yes, is has changed. People get so locked up into this is who I find beautiful yeah. from Pornhub, from Spearmint Rhino, from going to uh, Fountain Blue in Miami, yeah. wherever. This is my idea of beauty. Well, guess what? That could change. 100%. As you get older and you change as a man, your perception in what you find beautiful in a woman could change. 100%. So for you to ask me now, like, where's the most beautiful women? And it's the cheesiest answer ever. Uh, it's Inspirata. It's my girlfriend. It's Brandy. Is is like that's that's it. Yeah. There's there, and I'm not saying that to be cheesy. That's just a fact. Yes. Like I will still look at a woman and go, she's attractive, but I'm not like attracted to her. I'm not looking at her to be like creepy to like Man. get her number or or I don't know. I just don't do that. Yeah. I think that's something that um, men can understand, but. I, it's, I've had a hard time explaining that to women in my past where, you know, I worked in nightclubs for a long time and they'd be like, oh, you see so many beautiful women. I'm like, yeah, yeah, every day, like literally hundreds of them, like hundreds. Well, how are you ever going to love me? Oh, because I am i don't love them. Uh, they're attractive, but I'm a, 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 a six foot Norwegian blonde with the biggest tits in the world could walk in here right now. And I would look at her and be like, wow. Most guys think you're ridiculous. You're you're like a five to me. I'm not into tall blondes. It, it does nothing for me. It literally does nothing for me, right? You're attractive. I'm not attractive to you. 
And I think that's something that differentiates men and boys. When you were a boy, if you if a girl was hot, you wanted her, right? As you get older, you get it's like wine. When you were when you first start drinking wine, you're like, yeah, just I'm here to get drunk. As you get older, you're like, no, I want I want a cab. I want a Merlot. I want something specific, right? I want a specific taste. And it's the same. Oh no, now I'm gonna get in trouble comparing women to wine. Holy shit! Why? Uh, I think you're right. I okay, agree with good. you. Good, good. No, I, I agree with you. Okay, okay. About to say, well, mm. they get better as they age. Come on, let's go. <laughs> let's go, baby. Come on. <laughs> I just saved myself. Kick, save, and a butte. Kick, save, and a butte. <laughs> Woo. But yeah, oh. as a man, you you're more selective. I I, I acknowledge that the, the six foot blonde, leggy blonde, is is hot. Not hot to me. I like, like you said, I like my wife. I like who I've chosen. That's hot to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Shout out to my baby girl. But yeah, I like that. That's a great answer. That's a great answer to a douchebag question I asked you. No, <laughs> listen, the, 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 the worst question is the one you don't ask. I just think that because, and again, because that one just skyrocketed because yeah. Brandon just, he doubled down and was just like, not only is Scottsdale the best, he 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 threw out shade on Miami yes. and LA. Yes. Which was awesome. Yes. Because, and he jumps in the comments and is, and people like go at him going, well, this guy is a five. Well, actually he's a pretty good looking guy. Like yeah. if, if you saw him, he's a good looking guy. He's in great shape. He's got a puffy face. Well, not really. He's got a six pack. And uh, if you're into money, he has a Bugatti. And so, uh, yeah. you know, come on. Bill Gates, Bill Gates could snatch your girl at any time, brother. Bill Gates looks like a dweeb you beat up in high school and he'll drop a billion dollars on the table and your girl is his. So, Please stop judging men by their looks. Please. I'm a fat, chubby, going gray at 36 dude. Please believe I live in a great house and have a great life. And, you know, my wife is completely happy. Like That's awesome. Dudes who judge other dudes by their looks, I'm like, oh boy, you haven't figured it out yet. That's a, it's a, it's a thing about maturity. It's a, it, they're not at that point yet. Like, you're how old? 36? Yes, sir. I had my head so far up my ass at 36 I had, and I just got married. I had no idea what was going on to my ex-wife. Yeah. And you have more together at 36 than I did at 46. You think so? I know so. Give yourself grace. I know so. I think it helped that I grew up super poor. You know, I have conversations with my wife about this all the time because she grew up pretty, pretty well off, right? I don't think she grew up as well as you, but like pretty well off. And so a lot of the things that she stresses about or freaks out about, I'm like, baby, I, I grew up eating toast every day for, you know, for seven days if, if I needed to. Like, this ain't really a stress for me, right? This is like, I'm living the best version of my life right now. You know, I couldn't be happier. And I, I think it's something people don't want to talk about. It makes them uncomfortable. But I think, and this is going to get me in trouble, I think there's advantages to growing up poor. I think there's advantages to growing up poor. How hard I'm willing to work compared to the next person, it's not even reasonably close, right? Like until you've known poverty, you have no clue what you're willing to run from, right? And I think maybe that's why it feels like I have stuff together. It's just because I am grateful for everything that I have. And I appreciate you you saying that. I've never been told that before, so that it's feels true. good. It's true. I wanted. I, I I thank you for your vulnerability, um, and but I I thank you for coming in here to take the time to just have a talk for an hour and a half. Oh, bro, I know. could go with you for I could go with you for like three hours. And I have like a hundred more questions. I could still ask. You me. are absolutely going to be coming back on here um, in, in in a very short amount of time because every time we talk, I'm a better man for it. And I know that we'll touch people in what we're talking about now. Other people will either be educated or entertained or both, which we all need more of right now. And, and, and it's positive. Yeah. It's a good thing. It is. And I, I mean, people don't, it might make people uncomfortable, but you're an older white guy and I'm a, well, now I don't want to say young black guy. I'm a middle-aged black guy now. Right. But the world tries to convince us that you and I can't have these conversations, exactly that, right. that you and I don't have these connection points. And I think we've shown people today, that's pretty much bullshit. Me and you grew up completely different, but I could sit here and talk to you for hours about everything from movies and books and history to Miami, Vegas, all of that shit. And there's so much we wouldn't even cover then. And I think it's good to show people this. And that's why if ever you invite me on, my answer is 100% yes, man. 100%. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, my friend. Always.